Sure, sure. So, uh, so today uh, we will be taking a presentation of an interview mock. Uh, the topic would be Google Docs or more like a, a, a collaborative editing tool like Google Docs. So there are uh, other uh, options as well, like Etherpad, uh, Mockingbird as, as well. I haven't personally tried, but Google Docs, I think almost like everyone must have given one hands there. So, so collaborative editing, what is that is? Uh, it's basically a process of editing a document where, you know, multiple people in parallel can go ahead and make uh, edits to a given live document so if any of us are from the age old days of microsoft where uh, there was one document and you know uh, one guy maybe a manager would be opening that document and the rest of people can only have a read only view of that and it locks that uh, document on the network so it was like many a times that they used to share some sort of forms and it was really difficult to edit those documents so now uh, you know uh, those were the limitation of uh, whatever the microsoft would have designed at that point of time but uh, in the age of web world uh, google has taken a lead and they have uh, you know uh, developed next set of things so google docs is one of those so uh, let me uh, go ahead with the requirement uh, here so typical um, uh, process could be that uh, like how many how many users can concurrently edit uh, such files so officially they are saying that uh, you can edit up to you know 100 people can concurrent, concurrently edit a file but for interview scenario i'm just assuming that 10 people are concurrently editing this file this can be made 100 especially for you know uh, any tier 1 companies if they are looking for so 10 or 100 i will just specify uh, like uh, kind of official these are the numbers next thing is uh, what will be the scale uh, of uh, this system so the scale of the active user would be 10 million uh, daily active user here so there could be many more uh, user but they will not be you know daily active like uh, you know i have uncle with whom i had shared it uh, one document a month back he never opens it so you know uh, he is not part of this group probably so uh, next thing would be like uh, uh, this is like largely the scale the concurrency and uh, uh, the next thing would be what is the primary focus of the design so uh, in any you know uh, modern systems like uh, google drive or gmail they provide a lot of features but as part of uh, the interview scope we can ask our interviewer to reduce the scope to something that is feasible basically the mvp that uh, uh, typically we talk about so here uh, uh, let's say that we agree upon that editing is the only thing that we are uh, you know kind of concerned and uh, there could be you can ask a clarifying question like uh, do we need support history comment so for this scope we will be restricting those uh, 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 via clarification so next thing is like uh, what will be typically the size of the document whether it will be megabytes gigabytes or just kilobytes and do we support images web uh, you know uh, multimedia uh, text only so uh, and what will be like uh, uh, let the client what what sort of client will be using it so again for the purpose of uh, restricting to mvp and the purpose of presentation uh, we can say that uh, this will be only text only 100 kilobyte and web based only so uh, this is fine uh, anyone would like to add any more uh, requirement or maybe you know have any doubt with this requirement Yeah. Okay. So no question. So I'll I'll just move on. So, uh, so, so what I will do? Yeah. So even yeah, Confluence please. is similar to this only, right? The Atlassian Confluence doc. So right? so so uh, it's similar to this. Uh, I I think it is very different from this. Uh, 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 in in one way so from intent it's very uh, similar uh, the confluence uh, wiki that uh, you know people can go ahead collaboratively edit and uh, you know I, i'm not talking about that live intent but uh, uh, other than the live edits if you if you are making any change typically you will make a save and after the save uh, it will persist and the rest of the people will have to reload. So that is like kind of a primary feature. So though it sound very similar to Google Docs, but uh, in practice, it is more like maybe, you know, Git where uh, you commit a code and everyone else has to merge that thing. Uh, otherwise, they cannot move on. So I think uh, maybe uh, Confluence, especially in the save format would be more like uh, Git. Yeah, 
as per my understanding and you would like to add uh, or maybe have any you know more formal definition there because i'm just uh, speaking up based on my practical experience for confluence okay uh, no one has it's fine totally fine so so what i've seen is confluence also has some active editing kind of mode but i'm not very confident like you no know, i go ahead edit some people will also be editing the actively open doc i don't know whether it it can be made collaborative but uh, uh, you know typical intent is that you save and rest of people will refresh and then they will make edits and then there will be version control very uh, clearly visible here here it is much more live and interactive where i just go ahead I, I type in anything and anyone can type anything. Uh, history is a secondary thing, like uh, the updates are the primary thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, a, 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 any any other uh, uh, question? Otherwise, I'll move on to uh, up to this point. Hi, Shivkant. So <clears throat> my question is like, uh, do we allow new users to be added by uh, while we are editing the Nope. Yes, yes. So it is permission based. So, uh, okay. so what 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 happens is if I have edit permission, then uh, I can go ahead and you know completely delete the document. I can do almost like anything. So, uh, no, uh, yeah. So it is basically permission based. Yeah. Okay. So, so my question is like, while editing the document, we can add the users, like new users yes. can come up and. They yeah. can also give, right? Yes, yes, they can also contribute. So uh, yeah. it is like equal opportunity kind of thing. So as long as uh, the, there is an ad, admin guy, there is an editor, and then there is read-only viewers. So uh, if, if if the admin or the editor feels like, okay, you, you should not uh, get that level of privilege, they will just expose a read-only version of it. But uh, you know, all the, you know, maybe senior people, or if they consider everyone equal, they will share, you know, uh, read write permission to anyone and everyone. So yeah, so it, it all depends on how is the org set up or, you know, uh, at, uh, like if you are collaborating with someone externally, uh, again, uh, you can, you know, share uh, your document in read only or edit mode as per your choice. So it is all uh, a choice only. Yeah, sure. Got it. Thanks. Hey, uh, I have one question slightly unrelated. Yeah. Um, Permissions are uh, in general like permissions are based on ACL or like uh, in these kind of uh, softwares, or is there any other way? Uh, um, do you have any idea? Uh, I'm not sure, and I will be not covering that actually <laughs> as part of this. Uh, maybe if someone wants to contribute, maybe uh, they can add up here. So what I know practically, I don't know what, what it is called officially in Google world. Uh, practically is I just add a person and uh, that person uh, will be uh, added to you know some sort of permission listing. I don't know official name. That's why I'm just saying that I don't know. Uh, they, they, I can add that person as an editor or a viewer. So uh, whether I can call it access uh, authentication authorization based or access control based, I'm not sure what would be the official name there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll skip that part. Uh, yeah, if so, uh, we can maybe you know, take up that later if possible. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, next I'll be moving to the like uh, once we got the requirement, I'll just uh, convert it into some sort of uh, functional requirement. So here, uh, my intent is to capture it like user story so that uh, you know things are much more clear what I want to implement, and probably I can share it with uh, one or many of my developers so that uh, they can take it up as a Jira task and you know kind of uh, complete it. So the very first thing is user, user should be able to make edits uh, to a collaborative document. Uh, on the web and uh, the system should be able to push these edits uh, to the rest of the active collaborator. So these are like high level intents that we want to cover uh, as a functional requirement. And uh, from the non-functional requirement, uh, I think uh, these two takes uh, high uh, like uh, precedence on this, like uh, uh, how do we uh, you know uh, achieve high consistency on the face of 
concurrency basically concurrent edits so uh, like up to 10 people are trying to edit the same document right so uh, so uh, could it lead to you know uh, you know total data corruption and things like that so that 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 is something that uh, we have to think about it next thing is latency especially uh, you know people uh, are across the regions and uh, you know how do we make sure that uh, we have you know more optimistic uh, guarantees on these latency it uh, our goal is like 100 millisecond but let's see how much can we achieve uh, the third thing i, I think uh, even before scalability would be uh, i think availability may take precedence here so availability and scalability read write ratio is 10 is to 1 that i am thinking because most of people will be just uh, you know watching the document getting edited and uh, maybe one or two uh, people will be making the edits active edits so uh, as discussed like this would be uh, the big challenge here and uh, the security or whatever permissions are not uh, i'm not covering as part of this discussion so uh, does this make sense so like even, uh, do you uh, think... yeah, yeah please go ahead so even eventual consistency is fine here right do we need like even if the other person sees after some time a minute delay it's fine right do we need yeah yes see... Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so the in, your intent there is that uh, you are saying that little bit of latency is fine, but uh, by eventual consistency, you mean that uh, you know uh, actually it has slightly different meaning. Although it has very similar feel that okay, after a certain time it will get updated. But what might happen is uh, uh, if the, it is a eventual consistency model, you know, two people trying to the same uh, connect to the same DB, one might see. Uh, you know, the character is already updated. Other might see it is not updated. So the views could be very different. And if I try to make further edits on an existing thing, it could have some sort of cascading impact uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, completely having different views there, right? For example, I mean, in, in an extreme scenario, I just say, you know, uh, democracy is a boon or a blessing, okay? And I and you are collaborating. I, you know, suddenly take a turn and I choose democracy as a good thing. You choose, you know, bad thing. So, you know, we don't know where it will end up. But just to explain logically, so here it might, you know, fork away. So that's that's why eventual consistency uh, could be a problem. Maybe we will try to see uh, if that that is workable. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So uh, makes sense, right? Yeah. Any, anything else? Yeah. Well, yeah, one thing what you said, you know, you are assuming, I think, you know, maybe uh -huh. I may be wrong, that yeah. uh, only two people are concurrently going to edit it or write uh, it, right? Uh, because see, if you, if you look at for these type of um, uh -huh. uh, problems, you know, uh, uh -huh. multiple people updating the document is always a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, at one point, uh, it could become impractical. Uh, uh, I, I sort of agree there. Uh, but from systemic perspective, uh, I would, uh, yeah, I, I would say that at least we are supporting up to 10 people collaborating here. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so that is what we come to, right? We come to some number of users max, you know, so correct, when we come correct. to that number of users max, so what is our thought process? what exactly what are the which will restrict that uh, number of users uh, i'm just thinking very loud maybe sure, sure, i'm not saying sure, that sure, you sure. have to answer anyone can answer that also yeah 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 so, because sure, sure. that might be a question you know sometimes people will ask sure sure so how how would we uh, restrict the user so so what uh, i could think of is like you know uh, uh, a given session basically in a, in a given session if i try to open a document which is in a collaborative mode so i can you know say that uh, already you know kind of uh, this room is already filled up uh, we can't add, add anyone else so there will be some sort of counter wherever there is an open document there will be some counter metadata we, we could store where uh, if more than 10 or 100 people are coming we can say that we are already filled up so we can't take any more. So that way uh, we can fail fast, but at least uh, systematically or the guarantees would be met. So uh, it is not a functional failure, I would say. Yes, yeah, so I, I understand the implementing wise may be possible. So, but why are we limiting it? 
so is it Why, because uh, of the latency or uh yeah so, so mm-hmm. yeah sure sure so why are we uh, limiting this so uh, let me yeah um, so the thing is that uh, you know uh, if we have uh, uh, you know uh, i think uh, i can say that uh, technical and uh, you know uh, uh, you know physically uh, you know uh, feasible uh, could be the reason like you know fe- feasibility kind of thing. okay mm-hmm. but some key points will be more of a latency or maybe too many writes will be uh, very yeah, difficult yeah. to yeah, know, yeah yeah collaborate okay mm-hmm. yeah so that so, uh, maybe makes more sense okay yeah 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 technical and physical and uh, you know feasibility constraints some sort of feasibility constraints maybe so we we we, we don't know uh, like uh, 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 that to be we will discover so to say so mm-hmm. for example uh, you know uh, like you said like uh, uh, in any any uh, setup like uh, in zoom meeting how many uh, like especially when you attend any uh, office meeting where uh, your ceo is participating so why is everyone mute there uh, would be the question why why can't everyone be open so i mean it, it's a pattern of question everything definitely mm-hmm. <laughs> that you can question there but what happens is there Uh, even in the best case scenario you know uh, there will be always you know five people from whose room a lot of noise will come so for the coordinator it will be like uh, physically impossible to m- keep muting keep warning uh, them so they will uh, for 100 plus people they will mute everyone but for you know 10 10 to 20 people like we are gathering uh, we know that you know everyone is mature and this is a very small group so uh, you know the purpose would be solved so i think that could be uh, uh, s- Uh, you know uh, so uh, so that way you know where it fits is kind of a little open ended here uh, why 10 or 100 but uh, i think technical would be more like a reason yeah. okay yeah no no worries yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you yeah yeah so uh, okay cool so i'll uh, move on to the back of the envelope calculation uh, i'll try to quickly cover here so we have uh, 10 million uh, uh, daily active user and suppose up to up to up to 10 uh, collaborators are uh, taking up uh, this part so now uh, 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 like collaborators per document are you know uh, making uh, you know edits or uh, you know reads whatever so now uh, what's happening is so maximum we have 10 million open connection for document in collaboration uh, 100 million sorry and uh, we have 100 kb average uh, size of each document that uh, we have assumed so this is coming to close to maybe you know 10 terabytes of uh, disk storage requirement so this is the scale requirement and uh, this is kind of the storage requirement so now uh, 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 another thing i was thinking is Uh, that uh, this is the storage now what about uh, caching so can uh, we uh, kind of uh, you know optimistically calculate some numbers we will uh, debate on uh, how we will implement but 10% of these documents would be making any active edits at the moment so uh, what we can do is uh, the document uh, we can keep, probably keep them in mem- memory uh, you know uh, we can probably keep them in memory and for the idle document we can move out the memory at uh, uh, at the end of uh, you know uh, once the user all the user you know closes the session or it is staying idle so uh, that way uh, we will require around maybe you know 1 tb of uh, active memory so if we go ahead with 128 gb ram 10 machines we, for google scale we can easily you know uh, cover the caching requirements for these and uh, especially if we are able to shard this in different regions uh, even with replication replication factor uh, then uh, it should not be a big deal like uh, the uh, the number of servers that are coming are very less only like 10 or you know uh, of the order of one or two digits only so another thing is um, so this is with the mostly uh, the disk storage durable storage and the caching requirements that we could meet here uh, so next thing uh, like uh, what how many uh, edits are happening here so we are seeing that uh, we have uh, close to how many document uh, 10 10 million uh, daily active users are there but uh, only 10% are, uh, you know uh, yeah so only maybe you know 10% of them are active at one point of time so uh, we can say that uh, a- actively only uh, at a moment maybe you know uh, 10 million documents are getting a- edited and if uh, we are editing maybe i think uh, what is this three three edits 
per second or something like that. So it comes to, uh, yeah. So this is at, at a daily level I'm calculating. So per, so uh, if we are sending, so basically it is a heuristic that I am choosing that uh, whatever your edits you are making, like, uh, you know, I'm choosing ACIR. So uh, you might be seeing that sometime even this is getting delayed. So probably it is taking a small delay while sending the event. So if I divide by this, it is coming to close to 6 million events. So this is actually my heuristic number. Uh, we can actually debate on this uh, to be true. So uh, yeah, so uh, given a cache with proper uh, you know, sharding, uh, this, this kind of you know, event update event should be technically possible. Uh, as per uh, kind of uh, uh, the design proposal. And uh, regarding the compute, ma max, we, we will have maybe 10 or 100 million open connections for the you know, documents in collaboration. So 10% uh, of that are active. So only 10 million maybe uh, open sockets will be required. And uh, 1 million concurrent uh, you know, socket connection per node should be possible according to some, some papers. So, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, uh, theoretically, you, you know, up to 10 nodes, we can, uh, you know, um, fit in this, this kind of size, at least as per theory. So, uh, yeah. So the, the uh, any questions in this section? Uh, so any question in this, uh, back of the envelope estimation calculation. So what is the use of this open socket? 10% of active edits, right? Second, what you mentioned in compute requirements. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, actually, uh, what I'm talking about here is uh, more like when we are doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically the stream of the information that will go through the web socket. So it will have, you know, or at the back end there will be, uh, you know, we need to have, you know, web socket open for the uh, communication requirement. So that that is what we are talking about, like. Uh, Per uh, total, how many you know, uh, you know, connections you know uh, from the client to the backend server, basically server IP and port and client that combination. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Directional or whatever. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So so this 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 will be uh, uh, useful for low latency communication and uh, you know constant edits when we are making. Uh, then it, it can go all the way uh, till the system. So uh, so now uh, let me kind of uh, go ahead and propose some high level design, and uh, we'll see uh, you know, uh, whatever we can improve or if there are any gaps. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, the very first thing would be that uh, there will be an end user. I'll just zoom this up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, uh, is it more legible now? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, okay. So, so there will be one actor or uh, uh, like uh, the clients who, who will be making, basically ma making the edits here. Uh, so, what they will do is they will have uh, a snapshot of a do document, and that document, uh, the user's browser will show that document, and uh, it will connect via WebSocket or AJAX call some some combination of uh, you know some network protocol. It will uh, you know send uh, the communication to the backend web server, and from there it will go all the way till uh, uh, collaborative additive service. And uh, this service will actually uh, for the initial um, loading, it will fetch everything from the cache or if it is available in the cache in hot, or if it is not there in the cache, it will load from the DB, put it to cache and uh, uh, it, it will transfer over uh, to the client in, in this kind of format. Now, uh, what will happen is uh, this this guy he will make he or she will make some sort of uh, edits here like add something add another thing so similarly there will be uh, multiple other actors who, who will be uh, making you know uh, concurrent changes here so those things so we will have to kind of uh, respect or uh, you know uh, handle this thing so this is basically the challenge part because here the contention is uh, they will be touching the same set of document at least 10 people will be touching so uh, here so now uh, what what will happen is here uh, uh, what a little bit we are uh, trying to outsource uh, one of the component which which is uh, the resolver uh, service here so what what we are saying is that uh, the resolver service will use some sort of algorithm to 
converge this thing. So suppose there is an initial state of A, uh, it could very well become, uh, I, I can make a delta of B. There is another guy who will make a delta of C. So what it should get converged? Should it converge to a, a B, C, C, B, B, A or left with A? So this basically the final text, I'm kind of slightly uh, black boxing and outsourcing sourcing it to a, a resolver. So here uh, basically, uh, the, we will use some algorithm or algorithmic library uh, to achieve my purpose here. So, um, uh, so till now, uh, uh, does it make sense? Like, uh, would you like me to go and de uh, deep dive them one by one, or do you have any specific questions here? Sure, master. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I'm right, the core, the crux of the problem is uh, how we are resolving the conflicts, correct? Maybe we don't have to tell about all the scenarios, but uh, I feel that it is better we can we can take one or two scenarios, how we are resolving it. Otherwise, the whole purpose of this, uh, I'm sure I'm not sure whether that serves it. Got it right? Because we are talking about document sharing, and uh, we say that this is a depth problem, correct? If you look at it, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So we need to give some uh, logic uh, to tell about how we are resolving it. And uh, that's the main task, I think. Yeah. Uh, I kind of agree, but uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, I get your point. Um, um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that now. Uh, kind of, I'm not very much prepared on that part uh, to uh, go deep into the algorithm here. Uh, uh, let's see. Just look at me... it. Uh, just to yeah. add on that, right? Because we we discussed yeah. on the estimation part. We spent uh, yeah, yeah. time on that, right? But yes, the yes, actual yes. core is about how we are resolving the conflict, right? Yes, this is uh, one of the thing is uh, the algorithmic part is uh, core here. Uh, I I would uh, kind of agree. Uh, so uh, okay, I'll I'll, I'll 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 see if I'm uh, I get time or if I'm able to explain that. Uh, so uh, before that, I'll uh, try to cover up the high level design of the system and what are the other nuances here. So uh, just a follow yeah. up. So uh, the reason why I told us because I'm not sure what will be there in cash. Everybody will okay. have a copy, right? Let's say that there are four yes, people yes. editing online, right? I'm not sure yes, what sir. will be there in cash and how the four people will be able to get the conflicts, right? How that will be propagated. Yes, yes. I'm not able to visualize that. That's the reason. Sure, 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 sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to give uh, some part of it, definitely. So, uh, so uh, definitely. So this is high level proposal. So the way uh, I'm thinking is, that uh, the end user, they will operate uh, some sort of CRUD operation. They will create a word. Uh, so a definition of word would be uh, uh, after typing, if I take a pause of five seconds, or if the size of that is greater than five. So this is kind of a heuristic uh, I'll be taking here. Uh, so to say, just to reduce uh, like too, much, too many you know uh, calls getting made to the backend and uh, uh, you know, maybe to a little bit simplify the load on the server. Uh, so the next thing would be like, uh, I, I am updating something, then can I, you know, convert it into a delete or create kind of operation and delete is like whatever characters I have, I want to uh, basically just say that to remove this uh, from the uh, actual source here. And one more thing is the read. So here uh, we can uh, say that the server will be sending the additional changes. So we can have some sor sort of uh, server, uh, you know, push based uh, mechanism, or if you are using uh, WebSocket, then uh, no, the WebSocket can uh, you know give us back that information and we can kind of reconcile here. So, um, yeah, so sure, let's sure one question. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt. So, what is the smallest yeah. unit of change you're gonna write every time as a client updates? Yeah, so so this is just a proposal. Uh, it, it it could be definitely countered. So I'm I'm just uh, assuming that uh, I'll be allowing up to a word level of uh, modification. So that will be uh, 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 anything like up to up to five characters or up to five seconds. Uh, so this is just a heuristic I'm taking. Uh, uh, we could debate and maybe just say that okay now I, we should have at a character level. Then uh, maybe um, we can finally converge at that point. So this is kind of an initial assumption if we are just fine that, okay, uh, award level edit uh, is fine, then uh, we can go ahead with this.
yeah so typically what i have seen is uh, most of the system they they are doing i think at a character level so maybe if that is what everyone agrees then uh, you know I, I can just say okay uh, let's uh, do it at uh, you know character level because they are uh, the conflicts the chances of conflicts would would be uh, lesser but we will have to build low latency or more higher throughput uh, that is how i, I see So this is this is kind of a trade off that I am seeing uh, in the two approaches. That uh, if I have uh, you know kind of more like uh, you know a smaller uh, uh, you know more frequent things I'm changing, then uh, uh, you know uh, uh, it will become more complicated in terms of uh, scale requirement and things like that. So, anyways, so let, let's uh, let let me move on. Uh, so, uh, so how uh, are we planning to propose to solve this thing? So uh, there are two parts. So, uh, so this this is again very high level. Uh, we will go into like uh, how exactly we are trying to send this information, and uh, uh, no, uh, a lot could depend actually on the underlying algorithm that is there to process it. So right now the main idea is like the information pull uh, push. So uh, the read flow. So here, what we will do is uh, we can have uh, you know uh, some sort of regular you know pull base or long polling or web socket. So uh, I think we, we can uh, you know do web socket here that will be more efficient. Whenever uh, you know there are changes happening, we can you know communicate it back to the server, back from the server, and things like that. Similarly, for the push, we can have web socket uh, communication for uh, the passing of the information. So the first page uh, would be a full load. Uh, next would be like the next time onwards, instead of full page or document load, we can have some sort of Delta uploads or uh, Delta send. So this is where uh, like what we can do is we can say that, okay, uh, on my character position, I'm making this uh, you know Delta change. So for instance, I can say that uh, on position 100, uh, you know, send 10, 10 more characters there, like uh, something like that. So that, that could be uh, an instruction or, uh, you know, uh, like a read flow um, that's coming all the way from uh, the backend to the client. So similarly from uh, the client, we can, uh, may uh, tell the server that at my this position i will add five more character and the client will communicate with the server and the server will basically uh, will reconcile and uh, uh, you know send it uh, to the rest of the participants via the re read flow that is mentioned here so uh, so this is what is basically uh, my proposal here delete would be again uh, it will be some sort of instruction that hey go ahead and delete it so update probably we can convert it into delete and create or uh, however we like so uh, at at high level uh, this is what uh, is the data model uh, that i'm thinking especially uh, for the communication part uh, that uh, there will be the position and then there will be action that okay i want to create this uh, at this level create hola uh, and probably i want to delete uh, five characters here uh, then i want to you know maybe make some updates from this to that and uh, similarly server will send some sort of payload in similar format and we can agree on uh, that specific contract uh, for uh, the communication part of it so uh, so the way i'm imagining here is uh, that uh, based on the algorithm we can uh, send a smallest chunk of information maybe you know uh, character or something like that or uh, it could be even at word level if we are able to reconcile that uh, properly by algorithm so uh, does that uh, make sense yeah uh, sh sh shall i uh, go ahead yeah yeah please go ahead yeah oh. Okay, sure, sure. So, so, uh, uh, what, uh, so what, so what, what will happen here is like, uh, you know, any of the changes that that are uh, happening here, user will make an edits and it will be communicated back to uh, the rest of the user. So here, right now, uh, I, I think I should create a little bit more elaborate system here, where. Uh, no, uh, the edits, uh, I think maybe some sort of pipeline format would be a more mature here. So uh, 
uh, so that uh, you know uh, uh, otherwise this will this is becoming more like a stately stateful kind of system so the the way at least i am imagining here is that whoever is connected to uh, this uh, you know uh, uh, the document for editing they will have an active web socket open and then that uh, that web socket and uh, the stateful connection uh, it will basically have a context of the underlying document here so it can make uh, you know it can take and forward uh, uh, the edits here so for example the clients are making any changes it can go all the way and can send uh, it to the collaborative editing uh, service which will then help the resolution done and then it will uh, probably you know uh, uh, after the edits are done it will you know, give give back the changes to the service. Probably I can design more like a queue based model. I think that will be a little more robust and practical here. Uh, that could be an improvement I could think of here. So, uh, so this is largely uh, like uh, the interaction I'm thinking here. So uh, this is actually, I read a bit of theory, but uh, it's like a little bit of hard co concept like operational transformation. So uh, what it generally talks about is uh, there are uh, two ways of uh, having, you know, uh, making edits. So one uh, mechanism is uh, the pessimistic approach where, where we put a lock on uh, the, you know, item of concern uh, like we do in the DB. So in the old days, uh, the uh, this uh, basically Microsoft Drive docs basically they they used to have this kind of format where it locks the uh, you know document and only the person who has access can edit and rest of people cannot. So uh, here we will use more like an optimistic uh, uh, mechanism where we will not lock the document but we will allow. Uh, Two editor, two or uh, I, I would I should say two or more editors to modify the same section of the document uh, with the same time without conflict. So th this is uh, like kind of more algorithmically intensive. So these are the operations that are supported, like insert, delete, update. So uh, uh, here, what uh, what is status is like there will be a character character position, and we will just make edits of that character, and it will uh, converge those changes. Uh, and uh, you know, kind of uh, give back uh, the you know uh, final document for uh, viewing. So now, uh, so uh, now, uh, so here, uh, I, I think th there could be more details that uh, could be added as part of this explanation, and how more communication level details could be maybe elaborated a bit. Uh, but uh, as of now, it is not there. So. So a couple of things I would like to cover, like at least uh, from the document perspective, how uh, we can uh, you know, uh, design the service and uh, you know, uh, leverage the cache and the DB here. So uh, does that sound good? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, cool. So, uh, so uh, the, uh, yeah, so, so the thing uh, I'm thinking here is that uh, any of the active documents, it, it will be open and uh, that document, it will be the full snapshot of the, the doc, that document will be uh, pushed uh, to this uh, basically uh, to the uh, to the cache and uh, any uh, in the cache basically we will have some 30 minutes of TTL. So any of the edits that are being made, it will be made on the uh, uh, on the open document in the cache. So now, uh, like uh, I think maybe I can pull this below. It can have access to this. I'm just thinking out loud here. Maybe you now uh, this service might require access to this or something like that. I'm, I'm just thinking, I don't know if uh, that would be needed. But uh, so now uh, this cache will have a uh, you know, full snapshot of that document. So whenever edits are getting made, uh, it will uh, consult with uh, the resolver service with that algorithm, uh, basically uh, this one, um, uh, the operational transformation algorithm, it will run here and then it will uh, push uh, the contents to the cache. So whenever there is a response, it will convert that response as a delta to the rest of the participants. So uh, I think I can build up some sort of, uh, you know, queue here, maybe uh, I'll, I'll just try to see if, if that uh, works because that, that will be more practical here.
So some sort of, uh, we can think of some sort of queue. So whenever, you know, changes are getting made, uh, we will propagate that uh, to all the, you know, uh, actively online people. And we know that, uh, uh, you know, uh, so these guys via WebSocket, they will be connected. So they will be able to consume those deltas. For example, there is one person who is making all the edits. So all the edits will go all the way till collaborative edit, uh, document and uh, the deltas, uh, will get propagated uh, via the resolver service to the rest of the people. So uh, it should be you know clear and concise so that the clients can independently, uh, based on these instructions, can build up this thing. Like it will have clearly you know add something here, delete something here, and uh, the full active document will be in the cache. So once that thirty minute of active time is gone and none of the people are making edits, we can, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, remove it from the cache and we can take maybe, you know, a snapshot of every five minutes or something, a great time for the durability guarantee. So uh, this could be uh, one of the approach where, uh, you know, uh, the, we will be able to kind of, at least uh, from the functional and non-functional uh, side, uh, we can achieve most of the uh, guarantees here. So, so, I will uh, try to maybe justify some of uh, the things here, uh, so especially with uh, the trade off here. So, uh, uh, any other question? Otherwise, I'll, say, uh, I'll, I'll go to that part. Hey, uh, Shiva, this is Naresh. No, sorry, I joined uh, a bit late uh, today. I just wanted to understand the use case if I have uh, understood it correctly or not. Like uh, how to incorporate uh, the multiple user edits uh, which are going to happen concurrently, uh, the effective way of handling that. Is that the use case? Yes, yes. So largely we are uh, concentrating on uh, high level system design. So there is a little bit talk on uh, the algorithm, uh, but uh, it's like a bit more complicated. And uh, uh, in, in this time, I don't think I'll be able to explain this. So other than that, uh, all the other scope of, uh, you know, estimation and high level design, the systemic uh, concerns like uh, uh, you know, uh, what all will be the challenges like high consistency, low latency, availability, scalability, read issue. So all these things are definitely uh, 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 we will try to cover and uh, kind of uh, converge here. So uh, let me uh, start off with uh, the consistency uh, in, in face of concurrent edits. So, uh, yeah. So here, uh, what are basically uh, the trade-offs we are talking about here? So, uh, so when when we are saying that we want a high consistency you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, changes here so uh, 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 the intent here is that uh, it should not happen that uh, you know uh, two people see completely different uh, you know snapshot because we chose a eventual consistency model and you know one of the guys uh, saw data from a different replica and things like that and they make an edit and it will have a cascading change uh, basically the butterfly effect so we don't want that so what we want uh, to prevent that uh, we need uh, uh, any of the you know uh, like uh, to achieve this we will use any of the leader follower model for the data store and, and uh, for uh, this thing basically uh, the cache so we'll see what all and how we can achieve this so uh, the, the the very first thing is the high consistency guarantee of edits uh, for caching need uh, any no sql optimized for uh, reading would be preferred here uh, so if asked we can elaborate that we could use redis as a, a data store uh, basically the cache here which uh, supports uh, millions of you know uh, kind of uh, qps tps here uh, alternatively we can uh, choose dynamo db or react so uh, the thing here is that uh, we want uh, all these uh, to be uh, in, uh, you know, a leader follower model. So or we can only choose uh, a DB with a leader follower because we don't want uh, that, uh, you know, any guy who is reading the data or, you know, updating, they are uh, even for short period, they are out of sync. So uh, that kind of consistency guarantee can be only achieved in the leader follower model. Uh, uh, next thing is, uh, that uh, if if you are using the uh, cache and if you are using you know uh, uh, you know Redis as a NoSQL store, we can choose the Redis uh, you know persistent uh, store uh, for uh, for durability guarantee basically. Uh, so uh, for durability, we can uh, use this this thing. So what the goal here is that uh, we don't 
though edits are getting made we don't want to uh, lose the content right a a sure so, yeah i'm i'm sorry actually could you please go back to the same thing what you said about the leader for a model why it is so important here yeah yeah so yeah. so the thing is uh, that uh, it it might happen uh, that uh, you know um, uh, uh, one of the proposal came that uh, can we have eventual consistency here so okay. uh, if we uh, if the cache or the db are in eventual consistency model what could happen is you know uh, that there is uh, there are uh, and i am suppose on the best case i am on quorum or some 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 model of uh, you know tenable consistency so it could very well happen that i i wrote to you know two instances and uh, no, uh, our three instances, and I came back with uh, confirmation that okay, uh, this is uh, a correct write that I've done. And uh, while I'm reading, basically two people are reading. One guy got, uh, uh, you know, at that exact point of time, uh, uh, the server was not reachable for whatever reason. One of the replica was not reachable. One of the shard was not reachable. Uh, so what will happen is they might see. Uh, you know data from different set of replicas and they because of eventual consistency model sometime they they might differ as well so uh, i know uh, like uh, uh, some people have uh, with with theory or practice they have said that uh, with uh, you know quorum read and quorum write it it could be possible uh, to get a strong uh, uh, you know consistency uh, but just for safety uh, guarantee i would go ahead and say that all the writes will only happen to the uh, master and uh, writes to the master uh, uh, basically leader i will choose uh, the word and uh, reads uh, we can uh, choose the leader or uh, any of the followers uh, based on what, what is the guarantee that uh, system is providing so typically uh, like read is because it is in memory the same leader can also provide read and write uh, from the same node and rest of the uh, instances are uh, the replicas are just for uh, available basically the availability nothing else so that that would be based on very specific uh, implementation of uh, the choice alternatively if we choose dynamo db uh, it could be a managed survey so we don't have to worry much about it and uh, it will store the data as well there unless we delete it or we mm -hmm. can choose a re react yeah. as well yeah, sure yeah. one question you you said like you want to use a single ma master and uh, follower uh, this thing right yeah but what yeah, does yeah. google doc use do they use the same thing master slave uh, 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 I'm, I'm not sure about that this oh, is okay. uh, a proposal yeah this is a proposal oh okay okay uh, i got it yeah thanks yeah, this is a proposal for the scope. They might be using something else. So, as well. so, so you're saying master, uh, the reader, right? Both go to the master, right? Yeah. So, uh, especially in uh, this uh, Redis model, if you are using Redis, the read and write can go, both can go to the master. Should not be a problem. Like in memory, like 1 million QPS, TPS, it can anyway read. And uh, we can uh, uh, anyway, and they are in sync replicas. So reading from the followers will also not a problem there. So uh, either way, it will be fine for uh, the Redis as a choice. And uh, in Dynamo, it will be more like a black box, a React. I don't know the details, but uh, it could be very similar uh, here. And uh, uh, so this is uh, the cache where all the active edits are happening and especially in a fast paced manner where, you know, uh, yeah, if we are, uh, you know, uh, because things are concurrent, you know, the resolver came up with something and suddenly something else came and resolver again, you know, uh, came up with something else. All these things have to fed here and then fed back here. And, you know, because it is fast changing, that's why I'm choosing, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, a consistent, uh, you know, basically consistency uh, over availability model uh, for the cache here. So this is, uh, this would be my choice. Uh, so, uh, if we are choosing a two tier solution where uh, we can choose any DB with a high uh, throughput here, like, uh, you know, 10K to 100K and uh, there uh, for just the persistence requirement, like a snapshot every five minutes or, you know, a durable storage, we could actually, uh, we can use, uh, you know, a wide column DB or any uh, things like that. So, it could, there it could be leaderless because, uh, you know, uh, the uh, with with a quorum consistency so what will happen is uh, that uh, while a person is reading uh, they will not be uh, basically that space will be much higher there like i am reading from the desk very infrequently and uh, that too the model i am thinking is 
and only one snapshot will be read and it will be put to uh, the db basically uh, you know uh, read and put to cache basically uh, here so that way uh, whatever is a result at least there will be no consistency issue suppose a character got lost for whatever reason it's fine at least it is not a financial data but uh, inconsistency between you and me will be something that will be uh, you know kind of uh, costly i mean uh, a risky basically but uh, if we lose a character i don't see it, that will be a very big deal uh, once in a while once in a million event uh, it's fine as long as uh, the cash will then progress from there pretty uh, you know lucidly so that way we can choose uh, cassandra with the uh, quorum consistency or uh, someone can debate that uh, why can't we use a leader based data store there as well so that in that case uh, hbase could also be a solution but uh, i don't have uh, very much experience there uh, so yeah so this this is uh, largely uh, the thing uh, that i wanted to present and there are certain questions that uh, came up uh, from uh, my mock partner i can uh, you know uh, maybe elaborate uh, so uh, so or otherwise uh, you guys can drop in some more questions and uh, uh, i will then close with uh, uh, you know whatever i have Okay, hey, uh, I'm taking this question from the chat itself. So, uh, this sure, sure, question sure. Uh, that says, uh, so, so you know, we have people from different countries or continents. So yes, maybe, yes. Maybe uh, you know, uh, we may try to uh, try to you know cover up entire continent or cover up few countries to a certain data center. So if we are you know uh, sharing the document across the continents, like I'm from India. somebody from usa working on the same document how can we you know uh, manage to get a, a low latency as that of you know people connecting to the same data center uh, do we have any points on this uh, i uh, so personally uh, i tried this out so there was a kind of a document that was shared with me from us so uh, actually i get all the lag there i don't think they have also have any solution for this so uh, there is uh, basically uh, a lag uh, if the source of the truth uh, is in the far off region actually so uh, i think uh, from uh, it, it it is hard to solve problem at least um, i was editing a google docs and i was constantly seeing that kind of lag so i think uh, it is not possible to solve that Hmm, so certain lag is already okay, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, sometime uh, when i'm using notion so they might be also retaining some some sort of uh, uh, so this is for uh, the google uh, docs that i got from someone from the us uh, i was uh, facing this and sometime in uh, when i'm making edits to notion there is you know a random jitter uh, that i see so what will happen is i make a date and then suddenly it will get stuck and then it will go on and then it will get stuck so i think uh, in, uh, you know as long as uh, there is unreliable network and uh, you know uh, some physical latency issue like uh, from here to basically uh, from india to us or you know for, there will be maybe you know close to you know uh, 250 millisecond latency will be there or from uh, us to eu uh, i think there will be certain uh, latency of uh, 50 milli milliseconds here and uh, so uh, these things are like uh, you know prevalent i don't think uh, it can be completely eliminated uh, uh, just to cover uh, your part okay cool yeah thanks so yeah. in that case still you you would say it will be a single master will be fine right if we have our different geographies yes so, uh, yes in one so region and others will be still followers yes yes so that that kind of model uh, we can do uh, so here read yeah. write are almost parallel right i mean uh, so right, so the way i so, sorry yeah, yeah, please read and write they don't have much difference read and write ratio is not that uh, i mean it's almost similar right it's not yeah, like so, it's a very uh, system or right yeah, system yeah, yeah. right yeah yeah it's it's very close like uh, like uh, the best we can do is 10 is to 1 
so nothing uh, like uh, more, uh, anything not more than that so like uh, for example there is a tech lead in the team and there is a manager so they are you know aggressively punching their keyboards and rest of the guys in the team like maybe uh, a pm uh, and then uh, sd1 and 2 they will be mostly you know keeping a watch on the document so uh, very small opportunity of caching maybe just 10 is to 1 max kind of so more close to maybe you know 1 is to 1 as well but uh, kind of uh, debatable yeah so yeah so the, that that is the thing i also think that there is not much opportunity of caching in terms of uh, you know you know uh, whatever is data is there so it's mostly about the propagation of that information to the rest of the people so whether i am making an edit or not anyway uh, that has to be propagated so that's why i'm i have kept that read flow as more uh, uh, prominent there yeah so uh, any anything else no. So, so do you support offline editing as well? Offline editing, okay. Uh, let me just think of. So, uh, so for the offline uh, edit, th this is what I I've seen in uh, like uh, Notion. So, what happens is I go ahead, I do all the edits here, and then I open the uh, you know app. So, app takes you know maybe you know two three seconds, and uh, it you know. Uh, in one shot, it it will uh, reflect my change. So it might be doing something similar. I don't know if the exact design there. It might be something doing something similar. It will connect with the backend and it will say, "Hey, give me the latest snapshot of uh, uh, the content." So maybe if it is in the cache or DB or wherever, based on their inherent design, it will pull the full content and it it could refresh, uh, ref refresh. Especially if it is a, a completely new page. But if it is an active page that I have opened, then uh, uh, it could negotiate as a delta. But I think uh, in the uh, based on you know uh, application to application and device to device they might uh, optimize in one or the other way especially in notion i have seen that they have uh, you know edit button is there so what does that mean that uh, edit is an advanced feature in the app so not every time i am making edit so what it can do is that uh, it will always do a full load of the content and it will just uh, take a snapshot there so that that kind of thing we can implement here that uh, one shot reflect the change and uh, especially uh, uh, you know uh, so so this is uh, this is with respect to the read flow i'm talking uh, uh, yeah so now uh, for the write flow what, what can happen uh, th this will uh, depend on the uh, i don't know whether it is actually supported in any of these things but uh, let's say that uh, we actually allow that then what we can do is uh, we can have uh, a, a smart uh, editor like uh, embedded in the web or app we can make uh, you know all the edits uh, basically all the edits here especially if it is a single document uh, basically single shared document like uh, my uh, scenario and then it will uh, whenever it connects to the network it can uh, you know push all the delta in one shot so that could be possible uh, as uh, as a solution yeah so it, it should... edits will be a part of this uh, use case i slightly doubt because see there will be two things you know uh, uh -huh. online editing is is what is the intent right yes so yes offline, so i have scope of this yeah, yeah, yeah so offline edit is if you if you open an app so you, you just have to take whatever as the latest changes are that's all isn't it? But if yeah, you are actually trying something when you are offline, so someone has to do a conflict resolution. Yes, so, that, that that's, that's operation transformation, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so that 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 would be tricky. Uh, that's why uh, I, I I I don't think that uh, you know it would be really implemented to that extent in real world. So uh, 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 so that's why I see at least in Notion that uh, uh, in the default format it shows me. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, it tries to read from the server. I don't know if I can directly go ahead and make edits and it will be pushed back to the server. So conflict with will be uh, indeed, uh, uh, no, indeed an issue uh, if we are uh, doing too many, uh, you know, offline edits. So anyone has experience on this? I, I, I tried a little bit here and then uh, I have actually, uh, I don't have, uh, 
uh, you know, a, a lot of faith that I can edit here offline, uh, like I can have some sort of Google Docs plugin, I will edit and then I will connect with the network and then it will reconcile. So uh, I think they may have some mechanism, but I'm not very confident uh, how robust right. that is. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so we can think about like this, right? Say we have online two people that are trying to edit and, yeah. and we cannot guarantee the internet will be available, right? So all of a sudden, both of the connections got lost and they're still editing. So one solution could be because they're not connected to the server, we can make them not to edit anything because uh, we can show a pop saying the internet is not there, so you'll not be able to allow. Or else there's another option could be we'll, we'll still make them allow to edit. When the internet is back and is connected back, then then the automatic conflict resolution or user has to resolve somehow. That kind of thing, we, we, we can th think of it, right? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. And so... Uh, yeah, so basically the pessimistic uh, and uh, kind of uh, optimistic approach we can also take, uh, that is what you are suggesting. So I can suggest something, I don't know how accurate uh, on, the, on the lines it would be. So now uh, in the pessimistic, like uh, because the, uh, these days, the, all these things are very smart, like so it can uh, put a lock. So, uh, you know, it can put a lock on my uh, editor once I, uh, you know, uh, lose the internet connection. So that could be a possibility, uh, but I don't know how much it will be acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. But see, these uh, edits or whatever those uh, conflict resolutions, everything is done at, at an administrative level, right? So if, if, if some of the users, they lose the network connection, if they are not able to contact the server, so uh -huh. I'm not sure how those updates will be, you know, uh, consumed by that administrator and uh, just stored in. So when the user comes back, he will be giving it to it. That user. Yeah, yeah. So so once they they will be back online, probably based on the design, uh, it will be uh, propagated uh, back to uh, uh, to the you know uh, to the network or server. So. Uh, so here, like if you think in terms of, you know, cap theorem, so either we can provide the consistency and we can uh, provide the availability. So here we are saying that uh, we are, uh, you know, providing the consistency over availability. So, you know, uh, system will be down uh, on network uh, kind of, you know, network partition. So, uh, so, so to say, if that is the promise that we want to uh, percolate or, uh, you know, uh, do, then this is totally acceptable at least uh, in, in this model. Uh, but maybe, I, I don't know if uh, this will work. I will have to try right now. I haven't actually- yeah, no, Because uh, this know. question, you yeah. know, offline edits is very important. It looks very trivial though, because okay, we can okay. also say, okay, offline edits, we just don't put in our scope, but this can trip the whole discussion altogether, you know? Yes, yeah, we'll have some way be prepared for this. Uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, sure, sure. At least some some part of discussion, maybe I can uh, keep it, uh, or uh, at least cross question that. Okay, uh, are offline edits a uh, no part of the scope? And if I clarify, okay, it is not needed, then I can kind of skip this topic. But if they say, okay, I'm interested, then probably I can do some more uh, reading and you know, uh, kind of add some yeah. value here. Yeah. So whatever you did here, you know, all these trade offs, these are very important. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that yeah, really yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I'll uh, cool then. So I'll, I'll just uh, close on maybe uh, uh, a bit of this thing. So uh, sharding is uh, at least uh, uh, excluding the scenarios where uh, you no know, we can have uh, you no know, uh, all the data in the US and rest of people across the globe are uh, collaborating. So there we will see the latency. I think that that will be a challenge. But for most purposes, like uh, uh, like a different region can have a SAD, like I create a document, it will be in my region and also people who are part of my region can uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, enjoy you know, low latency uh, edits. So people in the same region can have uh, low latency edits. So uh, another thing is the collision. How are we planning to resolve? So this is something that uh, we will have to rely on certain algorithm only. Uh, 
uh, not much we can do and uh, basically the algorithm and uh, the system design to support it so that uh, at least we know that uh, you know unnecessarily why do we want to create uh, eventual consistency where even if the resolver did a good job and eventually we ended up in some bad state so fault tolerance i think that would be uh, something that uh, we can discuss uh, maybe uh, you know i can more add more detail here so what if the client becomes offline what if the net there are network interruption so as part of failure recovery what what else can we do like i'm you know off for five seconds so what what can i do so these are uh, some of the things that we can think of like so uh like uh, we can have some some sort of tolerance so this is what i could think of maybe uh, we can improve upon so tolerance of you know uh, offline versus uh, online so for example uh, if i am offline for 10 seconds then I'll still be considered a, an active contributor there. So, you know, any of my edits that are getting propagated, it will get processed and any of the edits that are getting created by others, I can, you know, uh, I'll have it in my queue just waiting for the processing. Uh, so, yeah, so th this is uh, one thing I could think of. There may be uh, other solutions uh, as well. So for net network interruptions, again, uh, we can have some sort of tolerance here. Uh, like uh, you know, one second or something like that. Uh, if there is no communication or web socket uh, is not listening or something like that, we are just fine. We'll say that okay, we are we are fine here. So another, I think one interesting thing uh, we could do here is what if uh, this uh, uh, this web server who who is negotiating the corresponding uh, web socket connection itself goes down. So one one of the things I could think of is that uh, whoever is uh, create uh, you know uh, addressing certain clients they will put their uh, you know connection details like what is the ip what is the port they have connected uh, in in some sort of uh, you know uh, in memory kind of uh, system and there uh, if, if the web uh, server dies uh, a new web server which is coming up uh, it will have some sort of mechanism to scan the db to find out that uh, uh, this was the web server that got dead and uh, these are uh, the certain uh, you know uh, uh, users that is, it was serving. So immediately after coming back, it will reconnect to those users and it will kind of try to provide some sort of uh, fault tolerance. And we can take some sort of snapshot of this so that even in memory, if these goes out, we can you know recover in maybe a thirty minutes period. So uh, yeah, so uh, so that is one thing uh, I could I could think of like uh, uh, as yeah uh, so. Uh, like uh, you know failure at uh, you know, web servers which is like actually more like a stateful so we can have uh, some sort of you know uh, caching for uh, you know uh, connection details and any new uh, new uh, web server is coming it can pull that up and uh, finally uh, there were some some uh, questions or details that were uh, thrown up to me i would like to share like uh, you know uh, some people ask me like why multiple uh, uh, load balancers here. So this is more like just for the service. This is like more like an API gateway here. And uh, for the cache, uh, like uh, we uh, like uh, the system can handle this kind of load definitely. And uh, we will have definitely uh, you know replicas everywhere and region wise sharding we can do and availability over consistency. Uh, we will have to you know kind of little bit adjust there. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so largely that's the thing uh, I have. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm done uh, with this. Yeah, maybe you can have any follow up. Like, uh, how does this algorithm work? So I've seen a very good uh, video from Naren, uh, who has done a really good job explaining this thing. Uh, but uh, uh, I've not covered it here actually. Yeah. So that's all. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I'll just unshare my screen. Uh, if there are no more questions, we can just have one, two minutes yeah. follow up and then uh, maybe close down on this. Uh, sounds good, right? Sure. Right, right. This is good. Will you be able to share this document if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I, I can share this document. Well, this is Not very good issue. information what you did. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Very important, yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks.